Thank you to Intel for being a sponsor for today's video. Get next generation performance for everything that you do with the 13 gen Intel Core processors. Especially built for gamers looking to maximize their performance with the latest games, while also having capabilities to tackle recording, streaming, and editing workloads. The 13 gen Intel Core processor based PCs make it all possible. What's up, everybody? This is Just Wong, and we are back with another video, and we're going to talk about, you know, you know, streaming, right? Are you interested in starting your own live streams? I feel like a lot of things that uh, people talk about is like, hey, how do I get into live streaming and everything like that? However, there's a lot of equipment that you're going to need, a lot of little pieces that you're going to have to have in order to start even a basic stream. And what each thing does and basically why you need it. And today, I'm going to be going through them, just every little individual part that you'll need to make your stream start and, and have a great stream to start with. And then, of course, you can upgrade as you go. But these are the essentials that you'll need to get started. So we'll start off with a computer, obviously, right? This is sort of the home base for where you want to start. Um, in terms of the power on the computer, it really depends on what you're going to be playing. This helps you play video games. This helps you actually use like streaming software. If you're using like OBS Studios or Streamlabs OBS or XSplit, uh, this will help you pretty much connect to the internet where you can actually chat with the viewers when you start your live streams up. Depending on what you want to play and what quality you are okay with, the amount of RAM differs, but I would definitely recommend at least 16 gigabytes of RAM in your computer, preferably 32, and then otherwise probably a couple of HDMI port plugs for capture cards, and of course, you know, the accoutrements like your mouse and keyboard and stuff like that. For, for high level streamers and like the top guys, they'll usually have two PCs. One of them is the output PC and it sort of acts like um, one of them you play on and the other one basically just captures and streams it out. But I don't want to get that too deep into it. Uh, you can find a lot of great pre-builds for not too much. Most people will always recommend you to build it yourself, but that can be kind of challenging and, and daunting and scary, especially if it's your first time. Honestly, if you just search online for good streaming computers, you probably just go with one of those. Uh, and of course, your mileage is going to vary depending on what you actually want to play. So gaming keyboard is another thing, because because even if you have a computer, you also need a gaming keyboard to pretty much uh, input data, input information, uh, pretty much connect to like, you know, to specific web websites, download software, even play video games on the keyboard with the WASD. You are going to want a keyboard that satisfies you, because if you're going to be streaming, especially if you're going to be streaming computer games, you need to enjoy what you are playing on. You want to feel nice clicks or or not nice clicks if you want you know not tactile keys uh you want to like the sound of it or lack of sound of it and you just want to get the most comfortable thing possible for you most people prefer mechanical keyboards and that's its own thing basically it means that the switches are a little bit more responsive a little bit faster more so than a typical sort of uh consumer grade keyboard which is just a membrane i think is what they call it it's a membrane sort whatever you would also use the keyboard to obviously put the title of your of your streams um you know put the category as well too um to also like you know add like different like type of scenes different like uh text um and but yeah you definitely need the keyboard keyboard is also a 100 necessity just like the computer is and similarly, when you're talking about a mouse, it's kind of the same thing. If you are planning on playing super precise computer games, such as Valorant or FPS in general, you probably want a mouse with higher dots per inch or DPI because it's going to be essentially more sensitive and you'll be able to have the most control over your mouse as possible. If it's other games, you don't really need a super high-end mouse just because uh, you don't need the precision involved with it but they are valuable to have uh, just because they're not that much more expensive than normal mice. Uh, I, I There's a bunch of brands you could go with. This one's a Logitech, those are great. Um, Razer makes great mice too. The only suggestion I would have is if you look over here, there are buttons for you know the left and the and forward and back. And I'm, I'm pretty sure you probably all already know about this, most people do, but having that is essential uh, in order to click back and forth on websites it's a time saver so mouse and keyboard is the definitely the two hit combo of of the pc world monitor okay 
what I just said about the mouse, I'm opposite here. I think the monitor is one of the most important things you can get. You want a low latency monitor, right? Low latency is probably the most important thing. Uh, I'm not someone that is a super, a super stickler for like 4K monitors or anything like that, or even the giant super huge monitors, even though I also work on my computer like editing and stuff. Uh, but you generally want monitors that you feel comfortable looking at that, you know, hopefully have good color balancing and are the correct size for your desk because obviously depending on how much space you have your needs are going to be different the hertz or the refresh rate so it'll say 144 hz is the refresh rate so it's essentially how often the monitor refreshes and updates the screen something like that i don't know it's techy but you can absolutely tell the difference between a 60 hertz which is normal like 60 frames per second and 144 it looks amazing 144 is is clear as day it's it's beautiful you can go beyond that if you want but 144 i think is at least the baseline how are you gonna look how you how do you know that the text is gonna pop on the screen how are you gonna see this mouse icon that i'm going in a, in a, in a circle right in a 360 circle motion all right how, how else are you going to view the video games how else are you going to view the chat how else are you going to start the live stream uh, if you don't know what you're looking for? So yeah, this is how you, yeah, but how, the most important, how else are you, how are you going to play video games without a gaming monitor? But I highly recommend at least two monitors, one for your OBS to just be open so you can see what's happening on your stream. And then the other for if you are playing a computer game or you want to look at something on the internet, like YouTube videos or, you know, other streams or like whatever react content you want to do, depending on what you want, obviously, but you definitely want a, the best monitor possible for if you play those computer games or if you are doing stuff that reaction time matters or if you just want pretty games and to look at your pretty games on your pretty computer that works too so camera is definitely a need but it's also like if you don't want to show your beautiful face then you don't really need a camera as well too but camera is like i use a camera obviously you see my face right there um i have a camera on right now you have two routes here one of them is going very simple and i think that's your best bet especially if you're just starting out their logitech makes these cams i think it's c920 or a C922, pick that up. Uh, that's the best camera for you right now, period. If you're watching this, that's the one you should get. Again, when you're starting out, you have different needs. If you have a bunch of money to drop, I would definitely recommend getting a, you know, DSLR. I have a Sony Alpha 5100, and then also I have an Elgato Cam Link to connect that to my computer, but you don't really need that. The DSLRs are way more expensive, like 800 to 1,000. I'm currently filming on a DSLR, which is why you know, but the camera looks good quality. You can tell the stuff in the background, whatever. It's worth it once you, you know, really start streaming. Microphone. Microphone is important as well, too, because look, how else can you hear my voice when I'm explaining on why do you need a microphone, right? I had uh, the Blue Yeti and the Blue Snowball, and then I upgraded to like a HyperX Quadcast, which was very nice. And currently I use a, uh, and currently I use an Audio-Technica 2020, uh, not a USB mic, and I plug it into something else that plugs into my computer which is a, called an audio interface. You want to start with a USB microphone because this microphone that you see, I'm pretty sure, sure is a Shure. There are two high-end microphones that you'll want to build to down the line if you really want to get into streaming, but they require a totally different setup. They're called uh, an XLR. Yeah, XLR mics. And they don't hook up via USB. They hook up via, and my voice is about to go out for a second. Five minutes later. That's embarrassing. Professional streamer, by the way. All right, uh, but yeah, so that's that's XLR. Um, they only hook up via a, you need a, uh, a mixing board, which is a bigger investment than you need a compressor, and you need a lot more stuff, and this is, I'm trying to keep this very simple. Just get a USB mic, it's fine for now. Lights, obviously you need lighting. You see the light in the background, there's a green light over there for me, and I have, of course, my box light that is reflecting off of a wall. There's a bunch of different things you can do with lights, and I'm gonna be honest, uh, me as a not haired person, so I, since I'm bald, uh, I think lighting is a little bit simpler for me because I don't have to worry about as many any shadows in my face as most other people would this is very tricky and honestly i know the least about this some people just get ring lights which just go on the monitor and they come at you just like that um lights are scary because for me personally i don't like having bright lights like on me when i play something so this is a combo right cameras and like you know how they say lights camera 
action. So that's pretty much what it is. Uh, you would you you use lights to complement the camera, right? Because of 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 how you're of how you're looking. And the worst part is it's it's. You can't tell what it does until you don't have it. You know what I mean? There's probably great consumer options for this, but I also think it's it's kind of tricky. And now we're getting into the optional stuff, right? I don't think a stream deck is necessarily mandatory when it comes to streaming. So what a stream deck is, is basically you can press a button and switch the scenes on your uh, software, or you can play an audio clip, or you can clip your stream, or you can go live with these buttons. Uh, but unless you're going to spend a ton of time in the stream deck kind of editing what the buttons do, you don't really need it because you can just come over here and like click into your stream and it's going to be totally fine. I still do that a lot. I just don't want to, I, I wouldn't recommend this to a brand new streamer because I think this is something that is easy to be excited for and buy and then you don't really know what to do with it because you're still figuring out the rest of the stuff. But this is something to aspire to once you kind of have your handle on the streaming stuff. It, it doesn't interrupt your gameplay. This is, a, this is a quality of life buff right here. Right, you could obviously play a Twitch ad from this, right? You could set up your buttons with with like specific browser and links, and by pressing that button for each of the, the the keys right there, that will do something. You could record the last thirty seconds of like a really hype moment um, that you want to like remember if you if uh, if 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 you if you know if you did something cool with the stream deck. So a lot, stream deck really helps a lot with transitions, uh, transitions recording. But like I said, it's a big giant quality of life buff. And that's what a stream deck is really used for. Capture card. Uh, so there are two different versions of these. One of these is internal and one is external. If you're just streaming for the first time, I'd recommend an external because internal, you have to uh, sort of open up your computer and put it into one of the PCI slots. And if that sounds intimidating to you, I get it. It was for me too, but they are more reliable. And of course, if you're planning on playing retro games, you definitely need different capture cards because not every, you know, the SNES isn't going to have a uh, HDMI port. Like, that's not how it works. So you definitely have to get a capture card that suits your needs. You don't really use a game capture card if you if you're if you're if you're just a PC snob like myself, um, because I play everything on like Steam or like Epic Game Store. So yeah, game capture card is very is definitely needed if you're more in if you're if you're more in tune with like kind of like console exclusive games like on the Nintendo switch or on the ps5 or on the xbox so yeah you need you need a game capture card to capture that footage and to to relate it to your streaming software green screen aha this is the fun stuff uh green screen is not essential but you can do it to to again elevate what you're trying to do um they make portable ones now like the ones that you can see right here this is probably an elgato and what's funny is i have this myself it's valuable to have this just in a pinch um or if you just want to not have a big bulky part of your stream behind you um i used to use a green screen now my setup includes uh when this tv is on my chat and and my alert notifications for subscriptions donations whatever pop up on it so i prefer having my room as the background but i used to use this green screen and i'll still use it depending on the content Think of it as like, okay, let's say you replace everything with a green screen on here, right? And then, so the green screen will just kind of like help you take away all the unnecessary background and kind of just make, and will only just show your face. When, it, when, when you when you have the camera uh, i think that a green screen is a perfectly good option i have the elgato green screen uh they're very good i mean you can literally just drape like a green cloth in your background and like thumbtack it to the wall you don't need to necessarily buy a super fancy green screen obviously you can it's great i mean i love my elgato green screen uh but you need to again do what works for you and again you might not even need a green screen if you're okay with your background existing on the stream but if you want to be more in the stream and not have those weird cutaways because you don't want to obscure the background except with just like the size of your body then a green screen is great because you get to remove yourself or your background from the stream and just it makes it a bit more seamless and a lot nicer especially when you're playing games that you need to see a hundred percent of the screen this is another luxury item i would say it's not really necessary until you've streamed for a while and have a sense of what you want to do again if i'm being honest i'm not trying to sell you something that you might not use in the immediate time term um I think other stuff is way more important, but this is definitely something to consider down the line. Other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed my explanation on like, you know, which items that you need when it comes down to it. I do, 
I do say that what you need immediately will be the four, the first four things, the computer, keyboard, mouse, and monitor combo. Those are the first four things that you need uh, for sure. Everything else can be like, you know, you, you can obviously add that later, but you know, you can always figure out streaming and kind of build as you go. I didn't have all of the equipment that I did right when I started. I had, I was streaming on my laptop and which didn't have a second monitor. I eventually got a second monitor and a, you know, I had a bad capture card because I would go to, you know, smash tournaments and record stuff there. But I think that's everything. So I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, you know, please, there's a, a ton of stuff that you can look at. Sorry, bump the mic. Don't bump the mic when she starts streaming. The standards that I've told you for, you know, certain equipment have been the same for at least like three or four years. So don't feel like you're falling too far behind in that regard. You're going to be fine with this stuff. And when you're first starting out, you don't really need the best of the best. Thanks for watching this. Hope it was helpful. And I'll see you on Twitch.